Hey everybody. Today we're using R to work through a typical goodness of fit testing problem. Here it is. In a random sample of 100 three child families, the distribution of girls was found to be according to this table. So 12 of those families had no girls, 31 of them had one girl, and so on. Is it plausible that the number of girls in such families has a binomial distribution with parameters n equals 3 and p equals 0.5? So remember what a binomial distribution is. This is the total number of observed occurrences in independent probability experiments where you can have exactly two outcomes, either an occurrence or a non-occurrence. So in this case, the occurrence of interest is that the family had a girl. They're having three children, so they could have up to three girls. You might expect the distribution to be approximately binomial with these parameters because about half of children born to families are girls and about half are other genders. We're going to test at significance level alpha equals 0.05 and I'll say a tiny bit more about that significance level in just a second. Okay, let's swap over to R where I have already coded in those observed values. Again, 12 of the families that had no girls, 31 that had one girl and so on. We are going to need to get some expected values. What proportion of families do we expect to have 0, 1, 2, or 3 girls if that null hypothesis were true? That is, if this data were actually drawn from that binomial distribution. We're also going to want those expected counts. So let's start with expected props. That's the simpler of the two. We need to get some binomial probabilities. In R, the command we're going to use is dbinome. So as the um, little prompt here says, we first have to say the x value, the value of interest. In this case, I have four values of interest, all the numbers between 0 and 3. Z zero girls, one girl, two girls, three girls. Then I have to put in my parameters. So 3 is the n here. That's the total number of children that they're having. And p is 0.5, the probability that each individual one is a girl. Let's see what we get. Expect props. Okay, so the probability that none of them are girls is 1 in 8. So 50% to the third power. That makes sense. 12.5%. You can see the other percentages here. 37.5% chance that a, fam that a family has um, one girl according to this null hypothesis. Let's also just get the expected uh, counts. I'll just call that exp. That's expected props times 100. And let's go ahead and print that out while we're at it. OK. So quick comment. We don't require that the expected uh, counts here are actually integers. It, may, it is absolutely impossible for a family to have 12 point I'm sorry, for 12.5 of the families to have no girls, but we don't worry about that when we're computing expected cell counts. Okay, so I want to do this problem two different ways. First, the quick way to just get the answer using the chi-square.test function that's built in with R. Secondly, I want to go through this and do some of the calculations a bit more slowly to see what's going on underneath the hood and try and, under and, try and uh, make sure we all understand the process as much as possible. So chi-square.test is going to give us a direct answer. It's going to give us a test statistic and a p-value. First, I have to say the observed counts in each of my cells. And then I need to say p equals with the expected proportions. So in this case, it's exp props. By the way, if you just put exp in there for these counts, you will get an error. R does require that the p that you're feeding it, um, the expected proportions, add up to 1. OK, so we'll come back to the chi-squared um, test statistic in just a second. The main thing that we're looking at right now as we do this problem in a rough and ready manner is this p-value right here, 0 0.07232. By the way, that p, letter p, does not mean the same thing as this p over here. This is talking about the expected proportions. This p-value is talking about the probability of getting the kind, the sort of data that we just got if, in fact, the null hypothesis were true. So when I see this p-value of 0 0.07232, the way I interpret it is this. If, in fact, this data were being drawn from that straight binomial distribution, 
we would get data like this or more extreme only a little more than 7% of the time. Now, if you'll recall, we set a significance level of 0.05, 5%. This p-value is bigger than that. So um, that's indicating that this is not providing good evidence against that null hypothesis. We don't have sufficient evidence to conclude that this data is not coming from that binomial distribution. To say it just a little bit more clearly, I, I, the way I would phrase it is this. Our data is consistent with um, the hypothesis that it's being drawn from a binomial distribution with parameters n equals 3 and p equals 0.05. Okay, let's back up a little bit. Let's actually compute this chi-squared test statistic, talk a tiny little bit about what it means, and then recompute this p-value using it, using more fundamental commands in R. Okay, so maybe I'll call this chi-stat, just to differentiate it from some of the other things I have floating around here. The chi-squared test statistic is computed by adding up across all the different cells the difference between the observed and expected values, squared, divided by the expected values. Let me type some of this in, and then I'll say a tiny bit more about it. So the observed values minus the expected values, squared, divided by the expected values. And again, that's being added up across all the different values in the table. Let me just print that out. With any luck, we're going to get this value either exactly or with a difference that's only from rounding. And in fact, that's the case. 6.9867, just like we got before. Okay, so a tiny, tiny bit more about the chi-squared test statistic. The observed minus expected is, in absolute terms, just giving you um, some differences between the cell counts that we saw and what we would have predicted if the null hypothesis were true. So for instance, there were 12 families that had no girls when we would have predicted 12.5. There were 31 families that had one girl when we would have predicted 37.5. Some of those differences will be positive though and some of them will be negative. So we're gonna square all of them to make them positive. Because we wanna take into account the size of the data, we wanna um, sort of control for that. We don't want numbers to get bigger just when we have um, bigger tables, we're going to divide by the expected counts. Then of course we're going to sum up over all the different cells to get a statistic that takes into account all the different cell counts. Okay, so the p-value is supposed to represent, as I said a minute ago, the probability of getting data at least this extreme if that null hypothesis were true. So the p-value is going to be the probability of getting a chi-squared value that's bigger than this. So remember, chi-squareds are always going to be positive. You can see the square in here is doing that. So if the observed counts differ from the expected counts in bigger ways, this gets bigger. 1 minus p chi-squared. So p chi-squared is the CDF for the chi-squared distribution. So this is giving me that probability of randomly getting a chi-squared bigger than a specified value. In this case, it's going to be chi-squared underscore chi underscore stat, um, and I need to specify how many degrees of freedom, and in this case it's three. The number of degrees of freedom when we're doing a goodness of fit test is one fewer than the number of cells. So here the number of cells is four. You can see we have a vector of length four. If you're having three kids, there's four possibilities for the number of girls you have. Again, we cross our fingers, we should get about 0.072, and p s chi-squared. There we go. Let's print out p, 0.072, just like we hoped.